The ultimate fate of the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, remains uncertain. Dr. Peter Friedman, Chief Research Officer for Bay State Medical Center, came in to tell us that means efforts against the opioid addiction crisis face an equally uncertain future. Yes, I mean, it was an extension of a Bush-era bill, um, uh, the Parity Act, which was passed in 2000, it was actually signed in 2009, 2008-2009, uh, uh, and um, uh, the Parity Act made it such that um, addictions and mental health disorders had to be treated um, in terms of insurance benefits uh, this, uh, with no greater restrictions than you put on insurance benefits for physical health. So things like you couldn't limit the number of visits more for mental <coughs> health or substance use disorders than you could for physical health. Uh, the co-pays couldn't be um, more onerous than they are for uh, uh, physical health disorders, those kinds of things. I realize it's, it's, it's very ephemeral at this point. We have seen what's supposed to be the replacement for the Affordable Care Act. It's called ACA, the American Health Care Act. But already, the people most responsible for it, and I guess that's Speaker Paul Ryan, it's reported he's working on a second plan because this has not met with a lot of approval, even among his own members in the House, and, and a number of Republican senators have said, it's dead on arrival in the Senate. So whatever you've studied at this point, who knows if it's going to be good five days from now, five minutes from now, but do you have any sense at all looking at what you're able to see of the new bill if it addresses any of the concerns about the opioid epidemic in the way Obamacare very clearly did? Yeah, so the current bill, you know, the, I think the major critique that um, has come out from the Congressional Budget Office. I mean, as we're taping, the CBO came out yesterday with their findings that uh, ultimately 24 million people will be without, uh, 24 million people who ha currently have insurance will be without insurance. And, you know, if you, you know, use estimates of the prevalence of addictive disorders in the general population, it's usually somewhere between 8 and 10 percent. Um, you know, there are about 2 million people with addictive problems who will end up uh, without insurance. So clearly that is a loss for those uh, folks in that community. And then of those, you know, a smaller proportion have opiate use disorders. So there probably will be close to a million people nationwide who have insurance now that may be covering um, their addiction treatment, who will lose those benefits. And the issue is that uh, increasingly the treatments that are available are better and more sophisticated. We have medication. We have injectables now for opiate uh, addiction. And other injectables are actually on the way. It's a, it's a very exciting time to be in this field. But you need you know, it, it, they're not affordable for a lot of the patients who have uh, opiate use disorders. So those individuals will not, under the, um, the re proposed replacement plan, be able to afford those medications. I mean, you listen to the, I, I'm not a politician, but you sort of listen to what the politicians are saying. And, I, you know, I think that there is not a notion that there should be uh, universal coverage that, you know, we shouldn't be forcing people to get insurance if they don't want it. But, um, but of course, um, there is da this is the downside of it, is those, nobody, nobody <laughs> thinks they're going to get addiction, right? And nobody thinks that someone in their family is going to get, in, you know, that doesn't happen, you know, that, that's not the kind of thing most people think of as happening to them. So that's the kind of thing that you need insurance for because you never think it's going to happen to you or your family member. And um, so I think that really will be a consequence. You also make the point that rural areas, where in many cases the opioid addiction problem is very acute, you believe they would be hit hardest by Obamacare repeal. Yes. Um, so a lot, what we're seeing is a lot of the growth in the epidemic has been outside of the major cities in 
suburban areas, exurban areas, and in rural areas. Um, and um, those places traditionally don't have the addiction treatment infrastructure that large cities have. So for example, if you're in Boston and you have an opioid addiction problem uh, and you decide you want to get treatment, you can go to a methadone program. A lot of the methadone programs are funded by state block grants and the state block grants still exist. A lot of other addiction treatment programs are also funded by federal money that comes to the state specifically for addiction treatment. Uh, and that money typically goes out to formal programs. Well, the problem in rural areas is because the population density is lower, there are not as many of these formal programs to meet the increasing demand. So, so what's happened is, over the last 15 years, uh, a lot of the treatment is starting to occur in physicians' offices. We now have a new medication called buprenorphine. Um, it's popularly known by its brand name, which is Suboxone. And buprenorphine is a treatment that can be given by primary care physicians, so a, you know the proverbial country doc, in their office managing a group of patients who have opiate use disorder. If those individuals lose insurance, though, the ability of that doc or, um, or those uh, small programs out in the rural areas to be able to treat those folks is going to be lost. Bottom line, to sum it up, we're running out of time, believe it or not. You say in your report, and, it, and it's stated this clearly, and it's just so stark, we've got a serious opioid epidemic in the United States. It shows no signs of abating. Yeah, it's still going strong. I do believe it. W without Obamacare, it would have been a lot worse, and it would have been a lot worse particularly in states that ultimately adopted the Medicaid expansion. A lot of the folks, um, as we've heard in the news, who've gotten insurance um, have gotten it through the Medicaid expansion. That's particularly true in some of the more rural states like Kentucky and uh, West Virginia. Um, you know, but we've also seen benefits in Vermont and New Hampshire and, you know, in our, our uh, states to the north. Um, you know, in Massachusetts, we've had Romney care. Um, it certainly will be difficult in terms of the ongoing funding, but I think uh, hopefully the impact on our state will be, uh, you know, lessened by the fact that um, uh, we are committed to having insurance for all our citizens. Dr. Peter Friedman, thank you for coming in and spending some time with us. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you for having me.